He's just waiting for one call to verify it's us that we're street racing, and he's taking us to jail. Now this story starts out like pretty much every other car event that I would go to. My buddy, he actually shows up to my house early, we wash cars, get our cars just looking good for the ride out there to Galveston. There was a, uh, I believe a Cars and Coffee or some kind of meet. Pretty much we were riding from a Bucky's right there in Katy to a Bucky's all the way out there in Galveston and we were supposed to go through a pretty cool tunnel where mostly everyone revs their car going through it and you know it just sounds really cool. And at the time I didn't even have like but maybe 800 subscribers so I was trying to make a video on anything I could. So. Earlier on in the day, I was actually making a video on that event. Well, we show up there to the Bucky's, and it's going pretty good. All the cool cars are there. We go inside, get breakfast, get coffee. Now, for those of you who don't know what a Bucky's is, pretty much it is a mini Walmart. O honestly, I'm not even exaggerating. There is everything you could want in a gas station. It's there, and it's cool because when you go to this gas station, I think the average time that people spend actually in this gas station is like 20 or 30 minutes or something like that because there is just everything you want there. There's a huge candy section. There are toys. There are are uh, decorations for your house. There's fresh food there, there's tacos, there's all kind of breakfast items, lunch items, and dinner items. Anything you can want, it is there at Bucky's. So naturally, if there's any kind of Bucky's meat, you're excited to go to it. Now, before we leave the first Bucky's and start driving to the second Bucky's, the leader and the organizer of the entire drive, he got up and you know he got on a loudspeaker and he was saying how you know there's never been any crashes, how you know we want to keep the streak going, how you know there's no one being impounded, nobody uh, crashing. So let's go ahead and keep the streak going. And honestly, from then when he was saying that, I was starting to think to myself, you know, something's going to happen because he's jinxing it right now. Well, after he's done talking, letting everybody know which car he's going to be in because he's going to be taking pictures of everyone's ride. Uh, everyone goes back to their car, starts it up, and starts going. And honestly, that first five minutes was awesome because you don't hear anything but like V8s rumbling. You hear these exotic cars, the GTRs are taking off, Mustangs are taking off, it's an awesome sound. Well as we start going, as you could expect with all these cool cars going around, things get pretty fast and there was this one blue car, I think it was like a 2012 Mustang GT, I think like Kona Blue or something like that. He foolishly decided to race that GTR and that GTR blew that guy away. I believe that blue Mustang got up to about 130 miles an hour while the GTR got up to like 150 or 160. So yes, the drive was pretty fun and it was about an hour drive from Katy all the way to Galveston. So as you could expect, I mean, there is a ton of traffic going through there. So I mean, for the first like 10 minutes, yeah, we were driving pretty fast. But after that first 10 or 15 minutes, everyone really started to drive slower. And mind you, this is a huge convoy of cars and it's all kind of cars. There's rice burners, there's muscle cars, there's exotics, all kind of cars. Well, me, I was actually one of the last people to leave, so I was like in the back 25%. So from the first car that left the gas station to me, there was probably at least like a five minute break. So ahead of me, there were a bunch of cars speeding. And with cars speeding through Houston, someone's bound to get pulled over. So as we were driving, there were multiple cars pulled over. So we started seeing that and started slowing down. So it was really only the first 10 or 15 minutes. Everyone was going a little quick. Uh, after that, everyone was going pretty slow. And when I say slow, we were literally going the speed limit or maybe five over the speed limit. Well, me and my buddy were just cruising, having a good time, seeing all these cars race past us and everything. And we just want to take our time because like I said, there are a bunch of cars pulled over on both sides of us. So we're not driving fast. Now on this cruise, we decided to go about 10 minutes that's out the way because there was a bridge we could drive through where when you drive through it your car just echoes and you can hear your exhaust like clear as day and we actually had a choice to go the longer way you know and go through the bridge or go the shorter way and just head straight to Galveston well my group we decided to go to the bridge well as we're driving we're about 30 minutes away from Galveston and we come to a point where you either go left and go to the tunnel or you go straight and you go straight to Galveston well a lot of people didn't know what way to go so when it comes to that intersection a lot of people were slowing down being hesitant and then they were deciding okay yeah I go left or you know or you keep going straight and as you could assume that's gonna cause a buildup of traffic well as we come up to this buildup of traffic I am in the front and Wesley he's right there behind me and you know we just slow down and we stop well the driver of a Honda Civic two cars behind us they don't slow down they rear end another Honda Civic and that Honda Civic rear ends my buddy's Challenger and I saw the entire thing happen because I heard some tires lock up so I look at my rear view I see one car hit the other car and then my buddy's car I see it lurch forward so I knew he got rear-ended and he loves his car just as much as I love my car so I could just assume that he was upset well my buddy and both the Honda Civics they go ahead and pull off to the side of the road and me I actually keep going for maybe another quarter mile and I pull off to the side of the road up there and I thought it was gonna be a quick little thing you know they just exchange insurance information take pictures and I thought we were gonna be on our way well as it turns out the Civics they 
don't have insurance. So when I was told this, I knew it was gonna be a big ordeal. I knew we were gonna have to get police out there, write police report, all that kind of jazz. So I go ahead and I make an exit and I circle around, make a U-turn, I make another U-turn and pull it behind the Civics. And as soon as I pull it behind the Civics, the police, they say that, you know, we're gonna go ahead and pull off the highway so we're not blocking traffic or anything. And we're gonna pull off the highway to an empty lot and then that's where we're gonna exchange all the information that we need. So I'm all cool, what the heck? So this entire time I'm all cool, you know, it sucks for my buddy Wesley, but to me, you know, he's gonna get a new bumper, so I'm just gonna wait for him, I'm not just gonna leave him, because, you know, I just don't want him to be lost in the heart of Houston. Well, we pull up to this empty parking lot, and I just park my car off to the side, because I'm not involved in the accident at all, all I'm doing is waiting for my buddy to get the information so we can go ahead and keep going to Galveston. Well, as I park my car and walk up to my buddy's car, I hear how the police were mentioning something about street racing, but as we were driving there, you know, there were plenty of people street racing on the side of us, so I didn't really think anything of it. Well, a few minutes later, a police officer comes up to us and says that he's just waiting for one call to verify it's us that we're street racing and he's taking us to jail. And like I said earlier, we weren't driving fast, we weren't even going over the speed limit for like 15 minutes before that, so for me, I knew I wasn't street racing, so you know, I become defensive immediately because, you know, I've never even gotten a speeding ticket. And I'm trying to tell the officers, you know, hey, you know, it wasn't us street racing, uh, you know, you have it all misunderstood, you know, other street, other people might have been street racing, but us, we were just driving the speed limit. Well, the officer's only response to that is that they've gotten numerous calls, I think he said like 30 calls or something about people street racing on I-45, which is the highway that we were on, and that, you know, it's most likely us, and that he's just waiting for his call to verify that it was us, and he's taking us to jail. Now, to me, I was still defensive, because you have to think, a blue Mustang GT and a black Challenger RT, how many of those do you see on the road? So I was afraid that they were going to verify that it was our cars because, you know, there's so many on the road and that, you know, we're going to jail. And the way this one officer was talking, it was almost like good cop, bad cop, because there was one cop saying, you know, joking around, you know, trying to be nice to us. And there was this other cop saying that, you know, you're going to jail, how I can't wait to bring that blue Mustang in. And actually towards the end, he said he was salivating to try to impound my car. Well, after about 20, 25 minutes, uh, we overhear the officer saying how, you know, they can't really verify that it was our cars. So I do kind of loosen up when I I hear that you know they can't really verify and that you know all these witnesses that called and said that people are street racing none of them were answering their phones so I'm kind of starting to think that we can get out of this and the entire time since that first officer said he was taking us to jail my girlfriend she was crying because she's in college and she's never been arrested never has a speeding ticket or anything and the officer said that he's taking her to jail too because she's an accessory to a crime now when the officer said that I immediately became defensive for her you know I was saying that you know even if we were street racing you know take me to jail her she was just in the passenger seat why would you take her to jail and her family, they are from El Salvador, so I could just imagine how hard her parents would come down on her. Even though she's 22 years old, they would come down on her like a load of bricks. So the entire time I'm trying to calm my girlfriend down, and me and my buddy Wesley, we both work at GNC, so I'm worrying, you know, who's gonna cover the store for the next day, and this is all happening on a Saturday, so, you know, we're not, so we would have to stay in jail Saturday, Sunday, and maybe be released Monday morning at the earliest. I was trying to stay calm so that my girlfriend wouldn't worry even more, and when I was hearing that they couldn't verify that it was our cars, that definitely took a load off me. Well, the nicer officer, we ended up talking to him about all the cool kind of cars he's had, how, you know, how he likes being an officer, how it's crappy, all the, you know, bad publicity they're getting, and how being a police officer takes a lot more than what people think. And honestly, it's true. Police get unfair criticism from the news agencies to citizens. It's insane. Because police officers, they have a very hard job, you know, and so many people can't really put themselves in police officers' shoes. All they see is police officers on a power trip and that's not the case at all. So after about 40, 45 minutes, the meaner officer, he comes over and says that, you know, they can't verify that it's our car, and I guess their troopers, they actually got a few actual people who were street racing at the time. Uh, they got them, so they were happy by getting them, and they went ahead and let us go. And when I heard that, that was one of the happiest moments I've had in my life, because for me, you know, never even having a speeding ticket and having the, you know, threat of me going to jail, that was, to me, too much. Well, after we left that empty parking lot, we went ahead and went to the University of Houston went to a bar or a uh, little restaurant was right that was right there on campus they were open on Saturdays we went over there got something to eat decompressed and drove home and just relaxed so in one day my buddy got rear-ended we almost went to jail and on top of that we broke that group's record for not having any crashes or anybody going to jail and that is it for this story, but I actually got motivation to do this video because I've been listening to, or I've been looking at, a lot of different stories by VinWiki. And if you don't know who VinWiki is, they are a very fast-growing YouTube channel. I've watched at least, I mean, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating, probably 50 of their videos while I've been working. Uh, just something to play in the background, and if y'all aren't subscribed to them, go over, check them out, 
They have a lot of cool stories. Uh, one of the guys, he's actually from South Carolina. He's actually from my dad's hometown out there in Hampton. One of the other guys, he used to work at a Lamborghini dealership. He has all kind of stories. So if you aren't subscribed, go check him out. And I have a ton of car stories. So if you enjoyed this video, I will be making a lot more videos like it. And I'll actually have a playlist all on its own. So it will be a little bit easier to find my story videos. And I still will be posting my, my normal videos I post about, you know, car reviews, product reviews, all those kind of things. I'll just be throwing these car story videos in there every now and then. I'll put their name down in the description, but I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.